I really like what I read in chapter 5 of Revelation. It's really intriguing and kind of mysterious and excited to see what the scroll holds for the future. And definitely put 100% of my trust in Jesus. And um, chapter 5 definitely strengthens that. So here we go. The scroll and the lamb. Then I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horn horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne, and when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. And in my notes, it says, um, In John's days, books were written on scrolls, people, Pieces of um, papyrus or vellum up to 30 feet long, rolled up and sealed with clay or wax. The scroll that John sees contains a full account of what God has in store for the world. The seven seats indicate the importance of its contents. The seals are located throughout the scroll so that as each one is broken, more of the scroll can be read to reveal another phase of God's plan for the end of the world. Only Christ is worthy to break the seals and open the scrolls. So cool. The lion... Jesus proved himself worthy to break the seals and open the scroll by living a perfect life of obedience to God, dying on the cross for the sins of the world and rising from the dead to show his power and authority over evil and death. Only Christ conquered sin, death, hell, and Satan himself, so only he can be trusted with the world's future. The root of David refers to Jesus being from David's family line, thus fulfilling the promise of the Messiah in the Old Testament. Jesus Christ is pictured as both a lion, symbolizing his authority and power, and a lamb, symbolizing the submission to God's will. One of the elder calls John to look at the lion, but when John looks, he sees a lamb. Christ's lamb was the perfect sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. Therefore, only he can save us from the terrible events revealed by the scroll. Christ the lamb won the greatest battle of all. He defeated all the forces of evil by dying on the cross. The role of Christ the lion will be, led to, will be to lead the battle where Satan is finally defeated. Christ the Lion is victorious because of what the Christ the Lamb has already done. We will participate in his victory not because of our effort or goodness, but because he has promised eternal life to all who believe in him. John sees the Lamb looking as if it had been slain. The wounds inflicted on Jesus' body during his trial and crucifixion could still be seen. Jesus was called the Lamb of God by the Lamb by sorry, by John the Baptist. In the Old Testament, lambs were sacrificed to atone for sins. The Lamb of God died as a final sacrifice for all sins. The horns symbolize strength and power. Although Christ is a sacrificial lamb, he is no way weak. He was killed, but now he lives in God's strength and power. In Zechariah, the eyes are equated with the seven lamps and the one spirit. People from every nation are praising God before his throne. God's message of salvation and eternal life is not limited to a specific culture, race, or country. Anyone who comes to God in repentance and faith is accepted by him and will be part of the kingdom. Don't allow prejudices or bias to keep you from sharing Christ with others. Christ welcomes all people into his kingdom. The song of God's people praises Christ's work. He was one, slain, two, purchased them from his blood, three, gathered them into kingdom, made them into priests, and appointed them to reign the earth. Jesus has already died and paid the penalty for sin. He is now gathering us into his kingdom and making us priests. In the future, we will reign with him. Worship God and praise him for what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will do for all who trust in him. When we realize the glorious future that awaits us, we will find the strength to face our present difficulties. The believer's song praises Christ for bringing them into the kingdom and making them kings and priests. While now we are sometimes despised and mocked for our faith, in the future we will reign over all the earth. Christ's death made all believers priests of God, the channels of blessings between God and mankind.
And then chapter five goes on to say, then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. That would be the most miraculous thing to ever see. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in him, them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, to, sorry, be praise and honor, glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. It says in the notes here, Angels are spiritual beings created by God who help carry out his work on earth. They bring messages, protect God's people, offer encouragement, guide guidance, give guidance, bring punishment, patrol the earth, and fight the forces of evil. There are good and evil angels, but because evil angels are allied with Satan, they have considerably less power and authority than good angels. Eventually, the main role of the good angels will be to offer continuous praise to God. The scene in chapter 5 shows us that only the Lamb, Jesus Christ, is worthy to open the scroll, which is the events of history. Jesus, not Satan, holds the future. Jesus Christ is in control, and he alone is worthy to set into motion the events of the last days of history. And then chapter 6 goes into opening the seven seals.